Photoshop gives us the ability to change the color mode in our photographs and the modes are located under image. You'll see here we have multiple choices, bitmap, grayscale, duotone, index color, RGB, CMYK, lab color, and multi-channel. And then we also are, are showing the bit depth for each channel. And there aren't many occasions where you're going to want to or need to pay attention to the bits per channel. So we're really not going to look at those or go into any detail with those. Same with lab color and multi-channel. 99% of the time you'll never use those. So the ones we're going to focus on primarily are CMYK, RGB, and grayscale. And then I'll also show you duotone and bitmap. So you'll notice that by default, the photograph we have here is in RGB color, and that's typical most of the time. And for any web work that you're doing, most of the time RGB is fine. In a few rare occasions, especially if you want to create an animated GIF image, GIF, you will want to switch it to index color. But quite honestly, those are falling more and more out of style. And so it's a very rare occasion where you would actually use index color. The difference between RGB color and index color is that with index color it actually tracks the colors that are being used in the image and you can control how many colors are being shown at any given time. As low as perhaps eight colors up to 256. So if we choose index color you'll notice that I can select how many colors I want it to show. And if I go with Let's actually let's change it rather than go with 256. We could change it to 16. They also have some presets, but we're not really going to pay attention to those. So I'm going to change it just to 16 colors. And when I click OK, watch what happens. So the image has changed some, and everything that you see here is one of 16 colors, as opposed to if I change it to say eight colors. This is eight different colors, and essentially it looks like it's just different shades of the same color, right? And the same is true if I change it to, say, 256 colors. It has more to draw on, and so it look closer to the original. Matter of fact, you can't see much of a difference at all. But in most cases, you really won't need to use index color at all. Now, CMYK is another story. If you are using any kind of illustration, photograph, anything that's created in Photoshop for print. Ultimately, that file will need to be converted to CMYK. And uh, to do that, you just simply select CMYK color. It will show you what the default color profile is, and in most cases, you can use that default profile. We're not going to take time in this series to get into different color profiles and what they mean, but in 99% of the cases that you'll encounter, US web coded version 2 profile is perfect for what you're using. Essentially, this defines what most printing presses are running these days. So I'm just going to click OK. And you'll notice that really nothing has changed. The only thing that will change is that there's certain colors, like really bright blues, for instance, or super bright greens, that can't print in a CMYK process. The range for commercial printing is limited to a certain extent and so it'll change those colors to the nearest color safe version of that particular color and you can notice that really well if you bring up the color palette you notice here if I uh, click in these reds or you know what let's go to green uh, notice how with this bright green that I have selected here right now see where there's an exclamation mark over this version here what this is telling you, it's related to our CMYK process, it's telling you that this current version, this color that I have chosen, won't reproduce correctly in a CMYK environment. And so if you are designing or creating something that's to be for print and you're filling with a specific color, what you want to do is click on the color underneath the exclamation mark and it'll reset that color to a web and I mean by web, I mean printing web, by a CMYK print environment, it'll reset that so that now you know that it's safe. If I come up here and select another color that isn't CMYK safe, you'll notice that the alert shows up again. 
Okay, so it really gives you an idea of what will work and what will not work in a CMYK environment. Whenever you convert from RGB to CMYK in a photograph, it automatically detects any of the colors in the entire scene that may be out of bounds for the CMYK process and converts them to its nearest counterpart that's printer safe. Okay, so that's basically what's happening. In most cases, however, you really won't see any difference or any change in your photograph or design at all when you switch to CMYK. And then once you have it switched, you can see now the mode is listed as CMYK. Then you can save your image as a TIFF in most cases for print. Now, the next option that we have for modes is grayscale, and it's pretty much what you think. It turns a color image into a grayscale one, but it isn't the same as desaturating an image, and we're going to look at that in the next video. It literally strips all of the color information out of the image so that it's now just varying shades of black, okay, which is different from a desaturated color image. So there's a lot more information in a desaturated color image and it will reproduce differently. Whereas a grayscale image is one that you would use like if you're printing a newspaper in just black and white. That might be a good use for black and white image. And so all of that color data is gone except for just the gray, varying shades of gray. Once you have an image in grayscale, that opens up a couple other options, and that's bitmap and duotone. Bitmap you will likely never use. It essentially takes your grayscale image and reduces it down to either black or white. And if I click on it, it asks for our output resolution. The method of diffusion, the default, is normally what you'd want to use. And if I click OK, you can see what happens and if I zoom in it's just blacks it's either black or white and varying degrees of dots and so it, it kinda looks like a pixelized version of our image but again unless you're looking for some kind of a specialty technique you'll never use that option and then the final option is duotone and if I click on that it gives us the ability to select two different colors to create or in some cases depending on the option that we choose more but if I choose duotone, our first color here is black. We can select a second color, say a brown. And you'll notice that whenever I selected the brown, how it affected the image. So now the image is a combination of the brown and the black. Now you also notice these angles here on the left. If I click on those, these are actually uh, curves that allow us to tell how much of the color is going to show up in a given area. So like if I want the mid-tones to be darker, I can increase the curve in the middle here. And you'll notice that at 50% it's increasing to 66.3 right now, as opposed to if I come up here and drag it back down, you'll notice that those numbers are dropping and the colors are changing as well. You can also go in and modify these manually. So in many cases, uh, you'll use a lesser version of the color than you would the black. They also give you some presets that you can choose. Like you can see here, warm gray 8, black 1, uh, warm gray 8, black 2, so on and so forth. So like if I choose, say, warm gray 8, black 3. So warm gray 8 is this color here, and then black is the primary driving color and you can see how just by selecting the different options that are available how it literally changes the appearance of the image and so the image is being made up by just these two colors like how the original was RGB then we converted it to CMYK this version is now made up of just black and magenta that's it okay but let's say that we choose well probably not that Let's say we go with Cool Gray 7 and we really like that look. We can click OK. Then what I usually do, I almost always convert my duotone back to either RGB or CMYK, depending on the use that I'm using. So let's say for this instance, we're just using it for on the web. So I'm going to click RGB. And again, it converts it back to RGB, even though now it's just a duotone image because we stripped out that extra color. Okay, 
Now, I'm going to show you how to achieve a similar result using some of the other tools, the adjustment tools, in the next video.